Oh, hello. My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So we're continuing on in my series about how I kind of manage my reading in terms of tracking and procurement, all, all the nerdy things, basically. So today we're going to talk about my what I call my TBR spreadsheet, but really should just be called sort of like my collection spreadsheet. And this is like the bedrock of how I kind of keep track of what books I have, uh, how I've rated them, stats, lots of nerdy, nerdy, nerdy things. And I've decided that I'm going to split this up into two different videos because there's two tabs in the spreadsheet and they each really are doing something pretty different. So the first tab is a kind of dashboard view and it is what I'm going to talk about in my next video because really what it's trying to do is compare things year over year and that's where I can get into my really geeky stats. But really what I want to talk about today is the second spreadsheet which is my line, like itemized list of all of the books that are in my collection. So I think this is where I'm going to cut to a brief video of me actually like showing you the spreadsheet a little bit on my computer and the quality isn't great so I'm not gonna try to stay there for too long but I think just trying to verbally describe this to you without giving you at least some visual would be a little tough so let's cut over to that for a second okay so welcome to the nerd show aka my deep dive into my TBR slash collection spreadsheet. I don't think I'm going to keep you guys in this view for too long because I mean trying to film on a computer is not the best and like my attempts at doing screen capture while talking were not going very well but I just wanted to give you guys a visual about what I'm talking about. So let me give you like the whistle stop tour version of this. Um, you can see that up here at the top on this page, which is my collection tab, I have a bunch of different stats. And I'll, I think when I actually film the main part of this video, I'll get into kind of some of the things I like to track. But as you can see, a lot of this is like where my date di distribution is, different percentages of yes, no questions like, is uh, the author male or female? Um, are they a person of color? What my goals are long term is underneath here. What else do we got going on? Source uh, is collected up here at the top. Average publication year, average TBR time, so how long it took me to actually get, get to a book once it got into my collection and so on and so forth. So that's what I have kind of at the top of the spreadsheet. And then if you dive in, you can see every single row is a different book and it has all kinds of fun information including genre and date published, when I got it, how much I paid for it, where it is on my TBR, if it's if it's something that I have a rating for, all kinds of stuff like that. So now that you kind of have like at least some level of a visual in your head about what I'm talking about, I thought that I would get into just like why I track various things and one thing that I want to mention is that the reason why I use a spreadsheet in addition to what I do with Goodreads is that as as cool of a tool as I think Goodreads is, and actually I've recently um, joined Goodreads as Books Like Whoa, so you can find me if you go to goodreads.com slash books like whoa and I'm excited to engage a little bit more in sort of the social component of Goodreads than I have traditionally, but as, I, I think Goodreads is good for that, but I I'm a geek, we've established this. Like I'm, I'm a huge nerd about books and there's a lot of data points that I want to track that Goodreads is just not flexible enough for me in terms of what I am trying to do in terms of my tracking. So what I've realized is that for me, I want to have kind of duplicative ways of tracking things and a spreadsheet gives me the most control even if it's not the most like elegant of tools it just gives me a lot of control one thing that i like about my collection spreadsheet is that it allows me to have the tab that we're talking about today which really is looking at sort of in this moment, what does my collection look like, right? So it's very much like a snapshot view. But it also allows me to have my more dashboard thing, which we'll talk about next time. And that is really much more of a year over year view. So I think that it allows 
as compared, for instance, to something like Goodreads, it gives me the flexibility to both look at what does my collection look like today, but it also gives me the flexibility to kind of have more of a holistic view of how my reading tastes have changed over time, right? So like, okay, I used to have half my collection was from Borders, but now half of it is from Amazon instead. So I think I, I'm interested to know things like that. Um, so it allows me that flexibility, but it also can give me just some like real sense of how my reading tastes have changed with respect to like genre, right? So like, if you look at what, I, what I'm reading today versus five years ago, just at my little genre pie chart, it's quite different. So anyway, that's talking more about the dashboard, which we'll talk about next time, but um, I, that's just like talking about why I even bother doing the spreadsheet thing. That really is kind of the heart of it. I should also say that this spreadsheet is based off of a spreadsheet that I believe the blog is called Firefly Books Blog. I think that's what it's called. Um, I will definitely link it below, but she put up a spreadsheet, I think in 2012, which first like just, I really latched onto and was like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. And I've modified it significantly since her original posting. But if you are interested in starting off with a spreadsheet that has a lot of like formulas and stuff already built in for you, then I think it could be really helpful. Um, her spreadsheet is very focused on her yearly reading, which is another video that I'll get into eventually of how I keep track of my reading every year so that um, it's not just my collection books but also like library and all that kind of stuff but it's something that I modified to create my collection spreadsheet and I just think it's a great resource so I'll definitely link that below so that you guys can look at it if you are if you are so interested so on my collection page there is a lot of duplicative information of things that I would find if if I was doing this in Goodreads so I have a lot of sort of just basic bio information so title um, first last name. I keep track of the format of all of my books because I want to get a sense and this is particularly over time right something that's quite interesting to me of what where where are the percentages in terms of how I'm collecting? So am I collecting more eBooks? Am I collecting more physical? And if you look, I certainly have started collecting a lot more eBooks. And one thing that I've even done is set some goals for myself in terms of what, where I want my collection to be. So for instance, in 2018, I would like it if 80% of my eBook, of my um, collection was in eBook form. And I think that's an ambitious goal. That's an ambitious goal. But basically because it is such a pain in the ass to move books, I want to kind of set goals for myself in terms of format that I'm I'm being conscious about how I'm collecting and I had a whole video about ebooks versus physical books so I'll, I'll link that up in the cards or in the description but so that's something that is something that I like to keep a pretty close eye on. Another thing I track are just sort of uh, author or book demographics. So I like to track if something is male or female, uh, if the author is male or female, so I can keep an eye on percentages. And f you know, five years ago, the majority of my books were by male authors, but actually today, the majority of my books are by female authors. So that's an interesting shift. And then I also have started keeping track of things like, is this what I would consider a diverse book, right? So like, is this by somebody who's a person of color or is not straight or is not gender conforming? things like that and I'm actually sad to say that that's only 5% of my collection right now so while I think gender you know I think a lot of people are like oh I need to read more books by women I've heard that frequently that's not a problem for me but I do want to be more conscious about trying to read from more like a, a wider variety of voices for each book I also track uh, how long something has been on my TBR so what I try to do with that is essentially just give myself a sense of, okay, if I buy a book on average, how long does it take for me to read it? So right now, the average length something is on my TBR is 595 days, which is just under two years. So what that tells me is that I'm not doing a great job of getting to books quickly. That being said, some of these are books that have been on there for 10 years. Some of these are books that have been on for two days. So I mean, you know, you have to take that with somewhat of a grain of salt, but that's something that I try to keep an eye on. I also track the year published and I like to keep an idea of what the average for that is. So I just honestly, because I think that that is interesting. I keep track of where I got a book from and how much it cost just for valuation reasons. So like, I'm always paranoid that if there was a fire that I wouldn't be able to talk about like what books I had and you know, what I needed to replace with my insurance. That is dumb, but I always want to kind of just have a sense of like, hey girl, 
this is a $5,000 collection or whatever, whatever it is. And then of course I keep track of whether or not something is red or not. And I have something that I call Q position. Sorry, I keep looking down because I have my spreadsheet here, but Q position I <laughs> refer to essentially as how soon do I want to read something? So that really is my true TBR part of my collection. And I have a rating of zero to four. So a zero means something is read. A one means that I it is on my active TBR list. So it is something that within the way I look at it is the next six months to a year I want to read. And then I've got two, which I call my someday books. Those are books that are not on my active TBR, but I do like I have an active plan to read them at some point. Three is what I call my J's which is just in case. So there's a lot of sort of more like reference books that I keep in that category. There's there's not a lot of those, but it's something that I haven't necessarily read from cover to cover, but it's also maybe not a book that really lends itself to that. And I wanna just, you know, know that it's not technically read, but it's also not really unread. Anyway, those are the J's. And then fours are what I have started calling, instead of DNF, I call it my NGF, never gonna finish. And this is a new category that I introduced into the spreadsheet about two months ago. And the reason I did that was because I found that I had a lot of eBooks that I had gotten for cheap or for free. So usually no more, paid no more than 99 cents, but a lot of these were free ebooks that I either read like the first chapter of and wasn't into or now that I look at like the grand scheme of everything that I have I just don't think that I'm ever gonna get to and so I I had a big kind of purge where I gave all of those a zero so a DNF and said okay these are all gonna be zeros and I you know I still technically own them because they're ebooks and like they can't go to the bookstore or whatever like I can't take them to the used bookstore but I'm I'm no longer considering them a part of like my active TBR I'm not I have no intention of reading them they're essentially just there because there's not a way to get rid of them and then the last thing in terms of columns that I track for each book is whether an author is new to me so I like to keep track of if this is the first time I have bought something from that author or if it's the 50th it's just sort of a yes no but it gives me sort of like a kind of thumb in the air about how how many authors there are collectively in the collection. So based on all those columns I track a number of other stats which I've kind of already talked a little bit about but um, for example I like to track what percentage of my total collection is in my active TBR. So right now it's at about 12 percent and I like to keep that number between 10 to 15 percent of my collection is in my active TBR because that way I feel like I'm giving myself enough variety in terms of the different types of books I have to choose from to read but it doesn't feel overwhelming. So that that has been a pretty good sweet spot. I track things like the average rating so because I put all of those books in did not finish and gave them a zero rating that has actually pulled my average down but prior to doing that um, I think the average was right at about like a 4.5 rating which is uh, pretty good. I mean I, I feel like that on my scale of zero to seven a 4.5 means it's between a, a good book and a really good book. So yeah I mean I feel like that that would be a pretty good number but because I put all those books and did not finish I'm now under four so that's like a 3.9. Um, so I don't know I'm gonna revisit or think about how I, I might do that going forward because I don't actually think that's reflective. I don't know. You just had a moment of seeing the geeky workings of my mind in terms of trying to figure out how to get the most meaningful metrics for my own personal enjoyment. And then besides that, I mean, there's a lot of just like, okay, how many books do I have in this genre or that genre? How many books did I get from McKay's, my favorite used bookstore, versus how many books have I been getting from Amazon? All that kind of stuff I have sort of up at the top. And yeah, I mean, I, it's, I think they're most meaningful on, on a snapshot basis, which is really what this particular spreadsheet does. I don't know how meaningful they are, but when I look at them on the dashboard view, which is year over year, they become more interesting numbers to me. So anyway, I think that that pretty much does it for that particular uh, tab in my spreadsheet. Guys, this is so, so nerdy. And if you enjoyed this, I'm glad because I find this stuff really interesting and I'm always trying to find better ways 
to track my my books to track my reading and what I'm thinking about buying so anyway this is another entry in this series and I think there's probably three or four more to go I think I'll do a wrap-up video where I sort of talk about like here is the total workflow of how I track books um, but anyway this was another piece of the puzzle and I think that does it so um, like I said there'll be a part two of this particular spreadsheet deep dive and I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is, uh, yeah, I almost feel embarrassed at how, how geeky and in the weeds this is, but I'm really interested, so I'm hoping other people are too. So anyway, if you have ideas about how you use spreadsheets to track your kind of collection management, I would love to hear it, obviously. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. All that is in the description box. And I think that that does it. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will just talk to you later.